great Thanksgiving, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Some of you that happen to host it, you're not really sure. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. I want to read to you Psalm 103. I'm going to use this uh, psalm in my lesson this morning. So I just want to read it to you. One of the great psalms uh, in all, I think, the book of Psalms. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Let's pray together. Father, we're grateful today for your love for us. We're thankful for the privilege that we have today to meet and to assemble, to lift our voices in praise, to worship you in spirit and truth. We thank you for every soul present, for those who have joined us online. We pray especially for those of our family that have already begun to travel, and we give uh, thanks that they're able to go be with family and travel and and at the same time, we pray for their safety, that they'll return to us safe and sound. We're thankful, Lord, for family, for friends. And uh, we have so much to be grateful for today. And we especially uh, ask you that you'll help us express that to one another. And uh, most importantly, that we'll express our gratitude to you. Bless us in this time of worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. morning. If it's convenient for you, we'll stand for our first two songs. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I love you, Lord, and I live. Glorify your name, glorify your 
church. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning saying thank you. Thank you for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us. Heavenly Father, if we utter the word thanks on an infinite loop, it would never be enough to appreciate the things you've done for us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to have awakened on this day to come before you and worship you in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those that are in attendance in this place and for those that are in spirit online worshiping with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity across the globe to come before you as a united people, Christians, serving and praising you. Dear Heavenly Father, we know at this time of year it is, it is, a, it is a time to give thanks and to celebrate Thanksgiving. But Lord, please make sure that in our minds we see Thanksgiving every day we're allowed to live because it is truly that we should be giving thanks to you all the time. Heavenly Father, as we look at our inner lives and families and the situations and things that, that we may be going through, we know, Heavenly Father, that you're there with us and that we should always be mindful that there is someone that is worse off than we are. And Heavenly Father, we should be grateful and gracious for the position that you've given us in all things. Heavenly Father, each day that we're allowed to wake, we can share and should share the love that Jesus has provided for us, your overarching love, Heavenly Father. When we are a people that are so undeserving of the mercy and the grace that you give us. Heavenly Father, today we ask that you be with us as we worship you, thanking you for the leaders of this church and those that serve in many capacities to uplift your word and to bring about hope for the world because as we know that Jesus died, there is always hope for us. Heavenly Father, we pray today that we hear the word, and not only hear it, but we go and take that word out to the world. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come we that Tom for those beautiful songs and uh, Brother Harold Mann for that beautiful prayer. We ought to just make Harold Mann our designated prayer, don't you think? Man, I'm telling you what. Every time I hear that guy pray, I think, man, I don't, I don't know if I know how to pray, you know. 
Oh, he is a very thoughtful, very thoughtful man. Good, good man. I'm excited, y'all, this uh, coming week being Thanksgiving, and, and uh, I said to one of our young people this past week, I said, hey, you know what next week is, right? And I mean, like, not even skipping a beat, they went, yes, Black Friday. <laughs> and there you have it, our problem in the world today. People are looking forward to Black Friday and the deals that they're going to get because uh, they're not even thinking about Thanksgiving, not even thinking about being thankful. I think we want to be grateful. I think we want to be thankful people. We have so much to be thankful for and grateful for. But I think that there is a, a discontent in uh, many of us. You have so much. I have so much. And we have uh, lost sight of, of really the uh, appreciation for all that we have. And, um, and so I, just at the beginning of this, I, I want to answer why, and I, this doesn't cover it all, but I think one of it is, is expectations, is we expect something. People, have you, have you by the way, do you, do you, one of the reasons why you got aggravated at people this week or you were upset or frustrated is because you expected something more from them that they didn't give you. And so there is this frustration with expectations. I, I think everyone ought to have to travel to a third world country and serve, uh, minister, go on a mission trip. Because when you go to a third world country, what you realize is how little other people have and also how grateful they are for what they have. And I'm not saying, well, you know, it's better to be poor. All I'm saying is that the wealthy and the middle class have forgotten how much they have. And so when you have no expectations, when you're not expecting anything and people give you something, you're thankful for it. And, um, and I, I think that's, that's true for all of us. And by the way, I, there, there's a difference between having high standards and having high expectations. We ought to have high standards, but we need to be careful with our expectations. Another, we, we thirst for more. We always want more. Whatever we get, we want something more. Is that true? Um, I, I think that's true for all of us. And um, uh, if you, when you were 15, okay, do you remember when you were 15? Some of you are 15 now, I know, but some of us, it's been a long time since we were 15, but I can remember this. When I was 15, I didn't have squat. And what I had belonged to my parents. And they were quick to remind me that what I had belonged to them, okay? Now I want you to think about something. If you were to wake up at 15 having what you have now, would you not think you won the lottery? Yeah. Driving the car you're driving, living in the home you're dri living in, having what you have. If you woke up at 15 having what you have now, you, you'd have won the lottery. And you'd be so grateful, so thankful for, for every blessing that you had. So when I was 15, 16, is in the 70s, early 70s, long time ago. George Washington had just left as the presidency. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, we, we liked all kinds of music back then, but we especially liked our Motown music. And uh, there was a guy named Curtis Mayfield, who was kind of the coolest of cool. And uh, he sang a song that you ought to be thankful for what you've got. And do you remember that song? Some of you remember that song. I remember that song as a kid. Um, you know, you may drive a Cadillac, a big old Cadillac. You may not drive a car at all. And he talks about diamond in the back and gangster leans. I'll explain all of that later. <laughs> we'll explain all of that in glory. <laughs> it was an awesome song, you know. But I can remember thinking, and if it's 15 years old, be thankful. that He'd sing, be thankful. It was a real soulful song. Be thankful for what you got. Whether you got a Cadillac or car, you know, you got to be thankful for what you got. And so I do think there's this constant thirst um, for more. That's advertising based on that, right? Last year, whatever the newest and the best is now out of date. What you got last year is old, and you got to get you something new. And um, advertising, of course, that's, it's built on that. They, they've got to make you feel like you need something more. The best and the greatest is gone. And then, of course, uh, I think comparison. Um, 
hey, y'all, you didn't know you didn't have what you have until you compared it to what somebody else. Isn't that right? You didn't know what you were missing. You didn't know what you lacked until you saw what the rest of the world. Now, listen, I, I love, there are a lot of aspects about social media that I love. We're streaming right now. Social media can reach thousands of people. Spiritual blessings can come through social media. But social media pours jet fuel on what I'm talking about right now. Because we look at, we flip through somebody's Facebook page and we see their designer kitchen. And by the way, they don't cook in it. They just have a designer kitchen. Uh, you know, we see what someone else, we didn't know because we didn't have anything to compare it to. Now you can just turn on the internet and be able to see all that you had. I, it's, a, it's amazing when we lived in Alabama, and I tell these stories, I used to tell these stories about growing up in Alabama as a kid, and we had this field in front of our house, and we had this river that ran by our house, and there was a field across the street from us, and, and we would go out and explore, and we just had great times in, in, uh, in Alabama. And uh, several years ago, I was preaching in Texas, and I decided it was actually going to be easier to drive than get on an airplane. And so I decided to drive, and I took, uh, I took the interstate through Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And, um, and so uh, there in, in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, um, I stopped at, at, at a Burger King, uh, only dying at the nicest places. And I was talking to this kid across the counter, and I said, hey, I grew up here. And you could tell he, didn't, he could care less, right? He was taking my order, hey, you, you don't want a burger or what, you know? I tell him, hey, I grew up here, my name's Harold, you know? You know, I'm just trying to get to know him. And, and I said, I went, to, I, I went to school here, it was called Highlands Elementary. I walked to school, he didn't even look up from his little screen, he went like this. And I thought, he's kicking me out. <laughs> And I followed his hand, and I looked across the highway, and there was Highlands Elementary. And so I got my burger to go. And I got in a car, and I drove over to Highlands. And I followed the roads home that I used to walk as a kid. And I went back to the house that we moved into on 2nd Street in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And I went to the end of that road, and I found the smallest house in the neighborhood. And it wasn't a river, it was a drainage ditch. <laughs> it wasn't a forest, it was a vacant lot, okay? But to me as a kid, it was everything. I didn't know we didn't live in a mansion because I didn't have anything else to compare it to. The rich people lived across the street. His name was Johnny, his dad worked for Pepsi-Cola. And we could get a Pepsi anytime we wanted. It was warm and our teeth were gonna rot. But we could get a Pepsi anytime we wanted. That, we thought that guy had it all, man. You didn't know. Only until we start comparing ourselves to other people. A reporter called it the agony of Instagram. Um, man, that's a great, great phrase. Someone, and I wrote this down, someone said that the cure for envy is to celebrate what God has given others and to leverage what God has given you. That is a great, a great quote. All right, got your Bible open. We're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Paul uh, comes to the end of this uh, letter in 1 Thessalonians. And in verse 15, he says, See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek that which is good for one another for all men. Rejoice always. Boy, these are tough. These are small, short verses. Easy to read. Tough, tough to live. Pray without ceasing. In everything give, thing give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Most time we stop reading there, and we don't read that next verse. I think one of the ways we quench the Holy Spirit is to not be grateful, to not be thankful. For God to give us all this stuff and never say thank you to him. What does an atheist, how, what, who does an atheist thank for a sunset? You know, for the beauty around him. To be given you know, all of these blessings in life and not share them and not to be appreciative is tantamount, really, in Jewish culture to robbery. Is that you were robbing God, it was a, a form of larceny, for you to get something and not be thankful was robbery. And I wonder how many uh, of us could say, well, I've done that. I certainly, I certainly have. 
So um, I love, this is Psalm, 30, uh, Psalm 35. Uh, I wrote it in your notes. It should be in your outline. Psalm 35, verse 18 says, I will give thanks in the great assembly among the throngs of people. I will praise you. The Bible, not only does the Bible encourage being grateful, being thankful, it commands it. So, and also, if you've ever wondered what the will of God is, people say, man, I really wish, you know, um, I'd know God's will. Well, here's God's will, that you be thankful in all things. This is God's will for you. That's what the Bible says. Oh, what, what does God want me to do? I'll tell you what he wants you to do. He wants you to be thankful in every circumstance. That doesn't mean you have to be thankful for that circumstance, but whatever you're going through right now, he can find, you can find something to be grateful for, even in every circumstance. You can say, hey, Lord, I, I don't, and I'll, I'll talk about this this morning a little bit. And, and I think this is, it's not something we do as Harold Mann prayed. This isn't something we do once a year or once a week. This is a, a lifestyle. This is for a Christian. Um, this is, uh, it's an ongoing process. In, in fact, the word giving in 1 Thessalonians 5 is in the present tense. So it's not past tense, it's we're, we're, on, we're constantly giving, we're on, it's an ongoing process, it literally is a way of life. Why? Well, let me give you just a few things this morning. And the first is, is that it pleases the Lord. Gratitude, we want to be thankful to the Lord and we want to be pleasing to him, but, um, but it, it pleases, it pleases the Lord. Psalm 107, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love endures forever. Um, we, we sing, count our many blessings. We ought to count our blessings instead of list our misfortunes. That's what normally we do. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we were with our granddaughter, and I said, hey, you excited about Christmas coming up? And she said, oh, yeah. She said, um, I've been looking through some catalogs. <laughs> and um, I said, oh. I said, and it, one of the, I think uh, what, what she did is she had a, like a Target catalog her parents gave her and said, hey, circle, circle some things that you might want, you know, for Christmas. So she brought it to me. Everything was circled the entire... <laughs> she said, now I know a lot of things are circled. Y'all, everything was circled. But there were some things that had hearts and stars around them. Those were the things she wanted more. The circled things she wanted, but the ones she wanted more... That's what we do. We get these catalogs, we peruse them, we look through them, and we say, hey, we call them Christmas catalogs. We ought to have a catalog of thanksgiving. That's what, that's what Psalm 103 is. Psalm 103 that I read at the beginning of this service is a catalog of thanksgiving, not a Christmas catalog. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and my innermost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, forget none of, the, none of his benefits. Well, he's going to list them here. He forgives our sins. Secondly, he heals us from all diseases. Thirdly, he redeems our life. He, he crowns us with love and compassion. He satisfies our desire with good things. If you woke up this morning with more health than illness, you're more blessed than six million people who will not survive the week. If you've never experienced the danger of battle or loneliness or imprisonment or the agony of torture or the pains of starvation, you're ahead of 500 million people in the world right now. If you can attend a church meeting today, as you are right now, without a fear of harassment or arrest and torture or death, you're more blessed than 3 billion people in the world. If you have food in your refrigerator and clothes on your back and a roof over your head and a place to sleep, you are richer than 75% of this world. If you have money in the bank or in your wallet or spare change in a dish somewhere, you are in the top 8% of the world's most wealthy. Can you say thank you? No, everybody, say it out loud. Thank you. Thank you. And you're not, I know you're not thanking me. We're thanking him. According to Psalm 103, God forgives our sins. He not only forgives them, he forgets about them. I'll forgive their iniquity, I'll remember their sin no more. He heals our diseases. And by the way, I think that there is these physical healings, but, but I think more importantly, what God's talking about is emotional healing and spiritual healing. I think he's way more concerned about our spiritual life and that being healed than our, our physical life, but he does care 
about every aspect of our life. He redeems our life. To redeem means, I know you know this, it means to buy back. It's, it's paying something to buy back. God said he would redeem us. He has purchased us, and he did it with his precious blood. He crowns us with love and compassion. And it, just think about what he's done as children of God. He has adopted us as his children into his family. And our greater blessings, our greater life is to come. It's not behind us, it's before us. John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to him he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. That's John 1 and verse, and verse 12. He satisfies our desire for all good things. And I think we ought to take some time, you know, in our life just to say thank you. List some things out. Say thank you. I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for these things in my life. So, so it, it, is, it pleases the Lord. But secondly, it's expressed. You have to say it. Um, I, I think you'll see that. I think one of the most beautiful psalms in all the Bible, you know this, read about just every year about this time, Psalm 100. Psalm 100 says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know he that the Lord is God. He made us and that we are his and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And so there is this gratitude that as worshipers today we have not for just the things that we have, but for God and for what he's done and what he's doing in and of our life. His faithfulness, his goodness, his kindness, his mercy, his love, all the things that he gives us. Psychologists tell us today that sincere gratitude, people that are really grateful, really thankful, it is the healthiest of all human emotions. There is nothing more healthy or, that you can do. That's a, doesn't sound like a very grammatical statement. Hans Seil, who's considered like the father of stress reduction, he said that gratitude produces more positive emotional energy than any other attitude in life. Hey, y'all, don't you think God knows that? He made us. He's the one that inspired these words that we're reading to be grateful and to be thankful. Don't you think the God who made us and created us knows all that? Don't you think that the Holy Spirit knows that? who caused Paul to write in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, be grateful, be thankful in all things, for this is the will of God for you. Psalm, Psalm 100 is written to the people of Israel, but I think we can relate to it because the people of Israel, one of the things he tells them is when you come to the promised land and you settle into these warm homes and you have all this wonderful stuff, don't forget about me. Whatever you do, don't forget about me. He says it over and over, man, we're, we're no too... We're not much different. That We're not too far away from them. How, how long does it take us to forget about him? I led you through the wilderness. I brought you out of that terrible situation into this incredible land flowing with milk and honey. And it doesn't take long at all to realize that we forget about all the blessings that we have day to day. Gra gratitude says, Lord, I'm going to thank you for your goodness and your love and your faithfulness because those things are more important than any material thing in my life. They always are. We ought to express it. You ought to say, hey, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. Man, we ought to thank our parents, you know. They're still alive. Thank, thank our brothers and sisters. You know, some I, I've learned watching our, our, our grandsons, you know, eight and four now, they love each other and then they fight each other. And, um, and uh, they, I watch a little brother uh, follow his big brother around and he admires him, but he's so annoying. And y'all, I was that guy. And I called my brother uh, not long ago, and I said, hey, I'm sorry for all, uh, all the, 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 that I caused you as a little kid. I said, and I'm sorry that I'm cooler than you are now, and that I'm, that I'm taller than you are, and I have been for a long time. And he goes, Harold, it's okay. I, ne I really never paid much attention to you, you know. <laughs> and uh, I said, I know. But hey, y'all, say thank you. Say thank you to the people that are serving you in a restaurant. Say thank you to the people that are painting your house. Say thank you to the people that are serving in your life, that are doing things for you, man. Just say thank you. 
it's amazing how what it does not only to, to them, but it also it, it means something to you. All right, one last thing. Um, gratitude's contagious. If you, if you are grateful and you express your gratitude, other people will join in. Have you ever found that to be true? If you start thanking people and talking about in your life, hey man, I'm grateful for this, I'm thankful for this, other people will start doing that. Now the opposite of that is true. When you're whining and complaining and you're miserable all the time, that also is contagious. Your kids will start doing that. Your, your classmates, your workmates, it doesn't matter. It, all these things are contagious. Just like uh, gratitude and being thankful is contagious, um, certainly the opposite is, is, is true. So Hebrews 10 in uh, verse 24, uh, the writer of Hebrews said, let us consider one, one another to, pr to provoke to love and to good works. And I love that word provoke. Normally we think of provoking someone, we think of pushing someone's buttons in a negative way. But all it means is to incite someone to do a positive thing. So when we come together and we provoke one another, we're inciting, we're encouraging, maybe even a better word, stirring up uh, other people to do the same. We want other people to be grateful. We want to be thankful. And uh, I, I think that is, um, it's catchy, um, it's contagious, and other people will, will do it as well. And um, so I was leaving the bank the other day. I don't bank online. Um, I don't take pictures of, I go in, I talk to the people. I know the tellers all by name. I know all the people that work in that bank. I give them um, a, a Christmas card um, and so, and. Um, says I'm leaving, I'm talking to a group of them, I'm just telling them how grateful I am. And there's, you know, uh, banking is just such a tough, you know, I mean, ask Rick McMaster, it's a tough job anyway, but right now it's, and they, they were just, man, they, the more I talked about how grateful I was and how thankful I was, they started talking about the things they were grateful for and thankful for. Um, Dr. Dale Robbins wrote, and I quote, I used to think people complained because they had a lot of problems, and then I came to realize they have problems because they complain. <laughs> Complaining doesn't change anything or make situations better. It amplifies frustration, spreads discontent and discord. It invokes an invitation for the devil to cause havoc in our lives. And so in Exodus 16, after the people of Israel, by the way, they, they, they go on a 40-year trip, something that should have taken them a few days. They go on a 40-year expedition, and they aren't out of Egypt at any time at all, and they start grumbling. Exodus 16, 2, and the whole congregation, it doesn't say a few people, the whole congregation of people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Complaining makes us miserable, y'all. It makes people around us miserable, and before you know it, a whole lot of people are grumbling in your life. Be grateful, it's contagious. Provoke other people, incite other people. And, and then it, it produces contentment. Um, I think this is at the heart of being grateful is that you say, hey, I'm grateful for what I have. I'm thankful for what I have. Um, this past week, I, uh, I have this tree against my house. It was two weeks ago, I had this tree against my house. And it's, I, I don't know what kind of tree. I'm just not that kind of guy that knows all the trees in my yard. But it's some kind of gum tree, a sappy tree. But it's, it kind of sways back and forth, and it's pretty big. And it was leaning against the house. And that storm was coming. And the more it shook, the more it raked against the gutters. And I told Kay, I said, I got I to gotta take that down. And uh, I said, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Home Depot. I'm going to buy a chainsaw. <laughs> Immediately, Kay said, you are not buying a chainsaw. <laughs> I said, I'm going to buy a chainsaw. I'm going to get on a ladder. And I'm going to take I'm going to take that branch down. It's going to pull back. I said I'm going to call Jeremy O'Hearn and make sure that I, I know what I'm doing. He's got a degree in this stuff. He works for the city. And um, she said, "Whatever you do, don't buy a chainsaw." And so I went and bought a chainsaw. <laughs> and um, but it, it wasn't a chainsaw, y'all. It's one of those 18 bolt, 12 inch blade. Right? Put a battery in it. So. <laughs> So I went out and I cut the tree. I got on a ladder, I cut the tree. By the way, don't ever cut, even Melinda was saying, don't climb a ladder to cut anything. I got, Melinda knows more about cutting down trees than I do. So I cut this tree and it falls against the house. 
and and then it because of the wind it eventually fell to the ground and as I was cutting it up my little chain fell off my chainsaw <laughs> Kate helped me put it back on and in the middle of all this she went back in the house I could she, I could I could hear her muttering she walked away she went I, I, and I said what do you say <laughs> and um, so uh, in the middle of all this I'm curious and y'all it hit me I can do this I can lift these branches and carry them to my backyard. I can make a mess of this tree and cut it up against. How many people would want to do something like this right now? But first of all, they wouldn't have the $200 to go down and buy a little chainsaw like this. They wouldn't have the ability to, to carry it once it's cut up. And all of a sudden, I was so grateful for being able to do that, that job instead of being miserable and I think that's how we have to turn around things I'm grateful for taxes it shows that I'm employed I'm, I'm grateful for clothes that are a little too snug because it shows I've had plenty to eat um, I, I'm, I'm thankful for a lawn that needs mowing and windows that need cleaning and and gutters that need washing because it shows that I have a house a home even if not rented a parking spot not long ago at Walmart that was far away and I'm glad that I'm healthy enough and capable that I can walk far away which we ought to do anyway by the way I'm glad that I'm able to walk in from the parking lot and and do that for the gas bill that comes to my house because it's warm now and all the weariness of our muscles and aches because um, we've been productive for a day man be content so the Apostle Paul said, I've learned to be content in whatever circumstances I've been. And then one last thing will be done. Gratitude mirrors Christ. It is a portrayal of Christ. Jesus was so grateful. He was so thankful. In Luke chapter 10 and verse 21, he says, in the same hour, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus. And he said, I thank you, Lord, Father, or excuse me, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. He comes to the graveside of Lazarus. Do you remember this? And he tells them to pull the stone away. And as they, as they pull this stone away, he knows what he's going to do. He says, Jesus, he lifts up his eyes and he, he thanks the Father. He says, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. Um, I think you could bow your head even if no one's else at the table and thank God for the dinner you're going to eat today for the lunch you're going to have today um, that at night you could thank God for all that you have all that he's blessed you with um, y'all we're never more like him than when we're forgiving and grateful and thankful that's what he does Jesus was thankful to the father and when you read about how he lived on this earth he was constantly grateful he was constantly thankful to the father for the good things that came into his life and y'all as I close this I have to say I, I'm I'm so grateful for what he did on the cross we've heard the story so much and we've heard it maybe since we were children it's lost its power it's lost its effect but had he not gone to the cross at Calvary had he not sent Jesus uh, and Jesus not been willing to go to the cross and die for our sins and for the sins of all mankind, heaven would not be our home. If, de if there was no death, no burial, no resurrection, I got nothing to be thankful for, for today. I've got, there's no life eternal coming my way. My best days are not before me. But because of what Jesus did on the cross and after the cross, coming out of the grave, overcoming sin and death, you and I can have the same. I am so thankful for that today. Regard, no wonder we can be grateful for any circumstance or find, some, find things to be grateful for in all circumstances because regardless of our circumstances, y'all, they're temporary. We are transient. We are passing through this life by brief stay or sojourn. And one day, um, we'll see him face to face. So we're going to sing, Is Thy Heart Right with God? And what a great song for us to sing at the end of a lesson like this. And I pray that your heart is right, that you are grateful, that you are thankful that there are some things today that maybe you came in uh, heavy uh, with weight uh, on your soul. And I hope that it's lighter now, and not because of me, but because of his word and an appreciation for what he's done for all of us.
And especially, I think it starts in the heart. Um, Y'all, if our heart's not right, it doesn't matter what we get. If we're, uh, if we're ungrateful now, if, we don't, if you can't be grateful for what you have right now, chances are you're not going to be grateful tomorrow for whatever's going to come. And so, so be grateful now. You can be grateful today, thankful today, this moment. And even as we stand and sing this song of encouragement in a minute, um, my prayer is that you would be right with God and that your heart would be right with God that you would be grateful for the most important things in life, the spiritual things, that you would believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, willing to confess him, willing to repent, willing to turn away from sin, and to be baptized into Christ and raised to walk in newness of life. We have nothing without him. With him, we have everything. Without him, we have nothing. And so um, put him on in baptism today. Give your life to him today. Be grateful on into eternity. He's done all... Already, he's already done that for you. You just have to accept the gift that he offers this morning. I'll be here at the front. Um, Scott will be with me. We can help you in any way you come while we stand and sing this song of encouragement. Dooley wants us to just lift her up in prayer. You know, she's uh, been working at Children's Hospital now for over 15 years, and just some things it got kind of hard for her in, in different departments, and she's kind of wanting to move around and do something different, and, and uh, HR got involved, and, but she had six interviews in one day the other day, and just so many doors are opening for her. And uh, y'all, adult or child, would be uh, blessed to have Tina Dooley as a nurse um, serving him, that's for sure, Peter or uh, Tina for that matter. And so uh, I want to pray for Tina. Lord, thank you for open doors. And uh, I pray that the, the right one, the interviews that she had, the right people, the right situation would come. Use her gifts and uh, the abilities that you've uh, given her and that she's... Uh, honed and, and, uh, and, and built in her life uh, to use them in a, in a great way. We are, and even Tina this morning says, I, hey, I'm thankful that even going through this, I have options. I have, um, I have these wonderful avenues of, of opportunity. And, um, and so I pray, Lord, that one of those will uh, be an open door for her and that um, some of the frustration and, and heartache that she's had these last months will will be put behind her and she'll continue to serve 
And Lord, I, I, I'm just aware today that, you know, uh, Thanksgiving, family uh, coming together, it's tough for a lot of folks. They, they're, uh, they've lost loved ones. They're, they're going through a difficult time. And I pray for those that, uh, that are, are lonely and uh, struggling. You can be in a building full of people like this today and be lonely. And so I just pray, Lord, that you'll, they'll feel your presence like they've never felt before, know that they're loved, know how important they are to you and to other people, and, um, and that there'll be opportunities for us uh, to also reach out and bless others around us during this time. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a Savior. <coughs> sure like most of you you guys have been uh, enjoying this time of year when things seem to slow down and you get to do all the things that you want with your family nothing goes wrong and everything's just perfect and you can reflect on how thankful you are for those things I know in my house we've been experiencing that uh, the girls were sick this week Nora tested positive for flu a on Monday but she's healthy now no fevers uh, Emily has been sick as well, but she's healthy now. The rear end of my truck is going out, so that's great. Um, my hair's turning gray. I looked at it, and like, it's just getting weird up here. I'm only 35, and I'm not ready for that. <laughs> the end of the fiscal year at work is upon us, and I'm not an accountant. They keep asking me for all kinds of stuff. I don't know what they mean, <laughs> but they say we've got to have it now. Everything's got to be now. We're leaving tomorrow to go to South Alabama to spend Thanksgiving with our families, and this is the first year that my in-laws are going to be there for Thanksgiving lunch with my mom, and that's <laughs> probably going to go great. <laughs> it's been a week, guys. <laughs> um, but looking at that, I, I've been okay. Everything's fine. I was really excited to come here this morning, and I really appreciate the routine that I have Sunday mornings here. I usually talk to Brian Vaughn about football, sit down and talk to Miss Sandra about, you know, Alabama losing this year. That's all we do. 
that's another thing that's going bad. Alabama's out of it this year. It's just a weird place for me. So, But I'm sitting down. Nora's going to Bible class. We're getting settled. And I flip over this bulletin. And heaven forbid, I saw my name on here that I was presiding. I did not know. Uh, we weren't here last Sunday uh, because the girls were sick. Um, so I didn't realize I was on the table this week. So Harold, I'm glad you mentioned how social media is not, not the best thing because I'm using some wonderful wisdom from the world of Facebook this morning for <laughs> Lord's Supper. By the way, one thing that I'm very thankful for is to have a pulpit minister who can incorporate the phrase gangsta lean in a sermon. <laughs> Lawless. Lawless job. But my life moves 90 miles an hour. And uh, if I don't write things down, I forget them. And I'm thankful that um, I took a screenshot of this on July 17th. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know where I was at. But I was on Facebook, and I saw this meme. And it stuck with me. I was like, oh, i got to save that. I'm going to need it one day. Here it is. And it really puts into perspective the power of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior. And I'm just going to read it to you. It, it wasn't a fancy meme with a, a pretty background on it. It's just black background with white letters. And it said, the Apostle Paul entered heaven to the cheers of those he martyred. That's the power of the gospel. And if we really, you know, look at that and what that means, it puts everything else into perspective. Things are crazy right now. It's the holidays. But I got to spend a lot of time this week with my family, and things did get to slow down. Rear end's going out of the truck, but I've got a nice truck that's got me where I needed to go. Thanksgiving's hard for me. I miss seeing my dad. But this year, my father-in-law gets to be there. A guy that drives me insane, but I love him and respect him. And he's going to get to be there. I'm thankful for our, our church family here. I'm thankful for our small group. Uh, that we're going to get to have dinner with them tonight. Pumped about it. I'm thankful for the children's ministry here. I'm thankful for our youth ministry here. I'm thankful for all the great things that we have. And it's because of the power and the resurrection of our Savior. So this morning... As we gather around the table, let's keep that in mind, that we have everything that we have in life because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? Father, we're so very thankful for this time that we have to gather together to remember the, the death of your son. We thank you for his sacrifice, uh, his willing sacrifice at that, to take care of the greatest need that we have, which was to bridge the gap that sin created between us. We thank you for his body. And as we take of this bread this morning, help us to remember uh, the, the pain, the suffering that he went through uh, just for us. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, likewise, we're thankful for your son's blood that was shed on the cross for us so long ago. We're thankful for the power that was demonstrated in that act, and we know that that blood still has the same power to cleanse our sins today. We're so thankful for that. Help us as we take this cup this morning to remember uh, the sacrifice of our Savior. In his name we pray. Now we have the awesome opportunity to give back a portion of what we've been blessed with. Um, this time of year, things are crazy. Budgets get tight. Um, but if we look, there, there are so many ways that we've been blessed. This church is dependent upon us giving to do the things that we do for our community. I was on our website the other day, and I was looking at all the great things that we're involved with here. Um, and that's because of the generosity of our members here. So at this time, uh, let's go to God in prayer and thank him for the ways that he's blessed us and thankful, uh, thank him for the opportunities that we have to give. 
Father, you've been so good to us. Um, we, we're just so thankful of all the ways that you've chosen to bless us. Uh, God, we just don't deserve any of it, but we're so thankful for it. Help us to never take these blessings for granted. God, as we give back uh, this morning a, a portion of what you've given us, help us to do so cheerfully. Help us to do so with expectations. Help us to do that, to, to know that these funds, that they're going to be used in a way that's going to grow your kingdom. Lord, we, we have expectations for that. We want to see your kingdom grow, and that makes us cheerful when we give. Lord, be with us as, as we give this morning. Help us to examine our hearts. Help us to really uh, uh, examine how, how well we have it in this world, Lord. Um, give, us, give us the opportunity uh, this week to, to use the talents that you've given us to serve those around us. Help us to reach those who need encouragement our physical um, needs lord help us to to be that that tool for them lord we're just so thankful for everything that we have um, we ask that as we collect these funds that you'll be with the elders as they uh, decide the best use for them and we just help them to have a great impact for your kingdom and it's in your son's name we pray Yeah, we're grateful that uh, you're here this morning, especially if you're visiting with us. Uh, we'd love to have a chance to meet you if you'll stick around a few minutes after. Uh, give us just a minute to say hello. Uh, thank you for being with us this morning. Grateful for those who are uh, worshiping online with us. Uh, is it just me or sometimes do you feel like when you come on Sunday and you hear a lesson, I'm sitting here thinking, was he at my house this week? <laughs> Thought, you know, they say thoughts are things, um, and I'm thinking, was he reading my mind this week? Or, uh, a, lot of, a lot of weeks that happens. So, uh, Let's stand together and we'll sing uh, Higher Ground, then we'll be uh, led in prayer. And if you will, be seated for a few announcements after that. I'm pressing on.
Good morning. Please join me as we go to God in prayer. Good morning, Lord. Father, we stand before you this morning. We are so grateful and thankful for what we've seen, heard, and experienced here today. Father, we're asking and begging that these things we've done today will be pleasing to you and that we'll put them in our hearts and in our minds and that we will be better Christians in the future than we have been in the past. Father, help us to be grateful and thankful each and every day. Help us to share the love that you give us because we know that there's no greater gift than the love that you've given us. Father, we ask that you continue to bless the leaders here, that you would bless those that are serving in our military, our first responders, and that we as a nation will be grateful for the sacrifice that these men and women make each and every day on our behalf. Father God, we ask you to bless our families, that you would touch us, for each one of us is suffering in some way, but it's never in comparison for the way that you suffered for us. Father God, we just love you so, and we need you desperately in our lives. We want you to know that as we go through this week, each and every day in the future, that we will not only be thankful and grateful for this week and this Thursday, but that each moment of every day, we know that it's because you allow us to breathe that we're grateful and thankful. And Father God, if we praised and thank you in eternity, it still would not be enough. But we want you to know, Lord, right here and right now, of all the great things that you have done for us, we are most thankful for your son, who you allowed to come from the riches and glories of heaven to walk the streets as a man and give us a perfect example to pattern our lives after and then die on the cross for our sins, having done none of his own. And Father God, because of that death, burial, and resurrection, we are able to approach your throne this morning, Lord. We are seeking favors and begging forgiveness in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you guys for being here today. It's uh, been a blessing to have you worship with us if you're visiting and we're uh, so mindful that many of you are traveling, you're on the road, and some of you are on your way. Uh, the last couple of weeks we've met folks that have just stopped off here in worship, and they get in the car and they leave, they're all headed to another state. Wherever you're headed, we just pray the Lord will bless you and, and uh, keep you in his care. And, and uh, some of our folks are traveling. You see the Matos uh, family that's normally sitting down here. Um, they flew into Miami this morning, and they will cruise out of Miami for a week. And someone had to do it. Someone from the, someone had, from the, the eldership had to go. And Scott and I and Ted said, please go on our behalf. Go to the beaches of Roatan and take uh, our love. And uh, so uh, that's where they are. And I hope they have a great, uh, they hope they have a great Thanksgiving. And wherever you travel and, and uh, whoever you spend it with, I hope it's a wonderful one. Downstairs in the youth uh, uh, area, there's going to be a meeting, a very important meeting of all parents and the youth, and it's really a discussion about um, the upcoming events, the money uh, collected, things that are going to take place next year. Um, please, uh, it's not going to be long. Uh, please go downstairs and be a part of that meeting. It's just really important. Also, uh, this month is the Thanksgiving, Agape Thanksgiving Appeal. Um, this year, they're trying to raise $320,000 statewide by December the 31st. And um, Melinda, in her all the work she does, she added one more thing to her job. And she did put some cards together. You can find them on the back table. And it's actually three ways you can give to Agape. And um, Agape, as you know, is a, uh, a, a beautiful um, service for adoption and fostering uh, children and um, that uh, this congregation has supported. In fact, many folks here have been on the board or worked on the staff of Agape over the years and still do. So um, we, uh, we appreciate you for all that. Um, also, next door, as soon as this service is over, we're going to fill out cards for the folks that have 
um, in the community who have gotten uh, out of jail or whose uh, maybe uh, families of folks that are in uh, incarcerated right now, we're sending uh, cards to, um, just uh, wishing them a, a, a great Thanksgiving and inviting them to worship here. And um, if you can come next door and help us, there are several hundred cards that need to be filled out. We, Melinda put them in packets of 10, and if you can take 10, just like three lines, just write, hey, you know, Tom Cutter is going to be, I think, and Jeff McCandless um, are going to be helping with that next door. Tom uh, Trube is not feeling well, was going to take care of that today. But if you can help uh, us do that, that, it won't take you long at all, but uh, just write a few encouraging thoughts to those folks. That would be very nice. Um, we, we have folks come and stay with us a few years and leave, and, and uh, it's uh, in a short amount of time. The Rohoffs have really endeared themselves to this congregation. I don't think this is their last Sunday, is it, Scott? It's not y'all's last Sunday today, but it's, it, it's getting close to y'all's last Sunday, and, and uh, their kids live in another state. They're building a house in another state. They knew they were going to be here temporarily, and, um, but we just love them. They're just... Uh, they're just super, super kind people, been very generous to uh, uh, a lot of efforts in this congregation, and um, we're going to miss them. We wish you the best, and uh, y'all are a beautiful family. Um, I, I think this is right. Helen Dobbs' 92nd birthday is this week. Is that right? The 26th. Um, so uh, if you can get a card to Helen... Um, that would really, really be a beautiful thing, and I haven't seen them here the last couple of weeks. Um, and uh, so, uh, Helen Dobbs' 92nd birthday, I think it's the 26th, is that right? The 26th? And um, so, uh, you could put a card in the mail. Y'all, you know Helen will love it, okay? And she'll cherish it. And if you don't write her, she will call you and ask where your card is. So, just a heads up, and I uh, love Helen. Hey, keep Shirley Bartlett in your prayers. Uh, Marjorie Hager uh, was going to have surgery this week, but tested positive for COVID, was unable to. Zach, of course, um, uh, uh, he's come out of a coma. He's starting to, um, to uh, communicate on dif different levels with uh, people. And uh, so uh, this is the Holcomb's nephew that was in a, uh, an accident. And then Marvin Cox is home. And we extend our sympathy to um, the Dana Davis family. And um, we heard this morning that uh, Dana passed away about 2 in the morning. Many of you know Dana, um, preached some and worked with churches, really close friends of uh, the Price family. Um, and I know, Perry, you guys were really good buddies. And so uh, heart goes out to you and, uh, and to Susan especially, his wife, um, Kathy McCamus, and many others know the Davis family. And uh, so please pray for um, Susan Davis and others. Hey, Dana, he's fought the good fight. He's had cancer. He's had um, stem cell and uh, all, all kinds of stuff. And, man, he just goes in the hospital and comes out and, like a champion, um, just has it really has been one of the toughest people I've really admired for a, a long time. But y'all, I'm really thankful that he's able to go home and all that hurt and cancer is taken away from him. And um, just pray for Susan and, and uh, the blessing of that family. So um, I know there's probably some I've forgotten, but and I apologize for that. But we got a lot going on. Come next door, help us fill out some cards. Well, you, you, can, you can be hungry just for a few more minutes. And, um, and then... Uh, and if you need to go downstairs, uh, help uh, uh, Josh and Perry and all those. So also, you know, Perry's coming to the end of his work here. And, you know, I said all that about being thankful this morning. But, Perry, I am so grateful for you. I'm so thankful for your friendship. So thankful for the good work you did here for 22 years as a youth minister and continue to do. And you've made a difference in a lot of lives, but mine, uh, mine especially. Thanks for being a good friend and a brother in Christ. And uh, we're going we're gonna to miss you. Um, and uh, you can come back any time and visit. Uh, you can't stay with us. We are, we, we're never going to have a room for you. Okay. But you can stay with, uh, with Jorge. And, uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Y'all, I love you. Have a great Thanksgiving. Appreciate you so much. Um, listen to 
Curtis Mayfield uh, sometime this week, all right? And, uh, I've, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's say a prayer. Father, thank you today for loving us. Oh, my goodness, we're just so grateful for um, all that you've done, all that you're doing, all that you will do. So thankful. We don't have to ask for anything today. Just say thank you. We're content with what we have. We're so appreciative for everything that we have. We know that everything that we have right now, they're gifts that have come from your hand. And you've given us the ability to make money and to have money. And, and to whatever it is we've done, we, we owe it all to you. We can't take credit. We're vessels. We're just temporary uh, stewards of it. We're, they're in our hands for a short amount of time car and money and job and all of those things where where this world really is in our home and like dana's life has taught us today that uh, we one day will move on we'll go home and we'll all be together and what a great day that'll be in glory but until then lord help us to keep serving you and working and teaching your gospel and loving other people and uh, being the family that you want us to be here in Snellville and everywhere we go to be a light to a dark world. This world already has so much heartache. They need hope. And you bring that through your death, burial, and resurrection, through a kind word, uh, speaking to someone about Jesus and being grateful today. We're so mindful uh, of that. And we, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for these who have come today, for those who have joined us online. And uh, we uh, ask that you bless these who have been mentioned, those who have gone home from the hospital, those that are still in the hospital, those who have lost loved ones, those that are struggling right now. We ask that you bless them in a special way. Be with us as we leave this place, as we talk about the youth, as we write cards about the jail ministry, encourage other people, help us to be selfless in the way we live our life, like you were and like you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.